What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. Let me know if you can hear me okay. We're doing a live Q&A from the warehouse. I wanna talk about something that tripled my business recently and it may be not what you expect, but um, essentially the last couple of weeks I have been really focused on customers. So like improving customer service and working on delivering exactly what customers are looking for. And I've been sourcing exactly what customers are looking for and my business has been way better, never been better. So I think that Initially, right, I actually have been reselling now for eight years, um, full time for seven of those years. Initially, to be perfectly honest with everybody, the main customer I was serving before the last few weeks was myself. I really just resold the way that I wanted to sell, which is just whatever I want to do, however I want to do it, whenever I want during the day. And I um, achieved a sort of freedom pretty early on when I figured out that I only need to sell like two or three hundred dollars profit a day to not have to adhere to anybody else's schedule. Um, right now, the only schedule that I adhere to is my wife and my kids. Everything else, I control my whole destiny. However, I have switched because recently, um, this is going to sound weird, but I've been more interested in getting rich than just um, doing it for fun. So in order for that to work, all I have to really do is just focus on what customers want instead of what I'm looking for. And it's really tremendously helped. It should be obvious to do it that way, but um, currently my YouTube channel is just to serve myself. I'm just making these YouTube videos because I kind of want to document what I'm doing, so I'm share some ideas that I have. I have not really ever done my YouTube channel trying to adhere to the algorithm. I'm not really here to get the most views or most likes or most anything. I'm just sharing my thoughts. So. But in my resale business, I've switched. I'm now switched over to trying to deliver um, items to my customers that they're actually looking for. So like as an example, um, I'm moving locations in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to be moving from here to, we still good? Oh. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was um, changing from OBS. No, okay. I was just wondering. So um, I'm moving to a new location in a couple of weeks. Uh, they can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm moving to a new location in a couple of weeks. And I actually am almost sold out of inventory and I can't move into my new space until April 1st. So I'm actually ordering two more truckloads of inventory before we even move over there. And my main focus is to sell around a million dollars worth of stuff every week until I move out. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm setting up for this show. I'm going to be giving away a Peloton on Friday, which is pretty exciting. So um, mm -hmm. we did some homework on the fitness shoes that I'm selling and these fitness shoes the people who cater to it, they like cycling, they like running. And so the advertisements that I've been running and the inventory and the giveaway actually match. So like fitness gear, giving away a Peloton, targeting fitness people on Instagram. That's how the ad is working. Very different than if you guys have been following me, I gave away Super Bowl tickets for Kerry Yuma shoes, which doesn't make any sense because those shoes have nothing to do with the Super Bowl. In fact, it's a skateboarding brand. I should have given away tickets to meet Eric Costin or something, something that's more related. So when I did the ads, they would have hit better. Because what happened was during that show, I actually sold a few NFL items. I don't know if you guys remember. And they sold for full price. Every single item sold for full price because there was a lot of people on that show that were looking for NFL stuff because they wanted to go to the Super Bowl. And that goes to show like the person that won the Super Bowl tickets went with their dad. So obviously that demographic does not care about skating shoes. So all my future things are going, moving more that direction. I'm also gonna be selling on Thursday, the brand Cider, which I don't know if you guys know them. They're a big social media brand. They have 5 million followers on Instagram. It's kind of a teeny bopper, Shein, fast fashion type of brand. So I'm working on seeing if I can get a relationship with that direct, from that brand directly so that I can get stuff directly from the manufacturer to resell. But the average selling price is really low. So it's kind of like, do I want to have this direct partnership with the supplier, but the average sale price is only about $9, which is kind of scary because $9 doesn't add up that fast. So especially as a small business, I don't have like a huge team shipping out thousands of orders every single day that are the same thing. It's a totally different operation than I have set up. I'm actually set up to sell unique items over and over again. But anyway, um, that brand, when I did the research online, what's trending the most is the Stanley Cup. So I'm going to be giving away five Stanley Adventure Quenchers on that show because it matches that demographic. So as I become more in tune for what customers are actually looking for, this would be no surprise, but customers are paying way more money, they're way more happy, they're spending more. And I've been reading a little bit of Jeff Bezos' information because he hasn't 
released too, too much stuff recently, but he was just talking about customers are always going to want to have a deal. They're always going to want fast shipping. Um, so I'm just going to focus on having great selection, fast shipping. What was the other one? Hmm? Amazon sellers want fast shipping. They want easy returns. They want a good deal and they want selection. So this is something that I wanted to share with you guys. And I haven't really preached on this a lot because there's been a lot of talk about this 1000 item perfect store that fits in your garage. Um, sell 10, list 10, make a, um, you know, $200 a day profit. The thing is though, if you become obsessed with your customer, like I have been recently, I'm just thinking about what the customer wants and what the customer wants is actually the most selection and the most selection usually doesn't match with cutest, most efficient garage eBay store um, because there's not enough room in your garage to have great selection for everybody. So now when I'm buying shoes, I actually have size three all the way to size 14 and a half women's. I have the full spectrum. Every single person, every single height, weight, style, color. I have like every single color, every single size for all of these shoes. So that actually helps a lot because the customer can say, I'm looking for pink size nine. Now I might have two pink size nine, two different pinks. I might have one with for running and one for walking. And that's like a great way to shop. And I think that because of e-commerce, I don't need to spend money on a brick and mortar or a lot of heavy overhead. So I can spend all of my money on delivering really, really good inventory for people. And recently it's been paying off big for me. Like I've been having way more repeat customers, way more happy customers. It's not the easiest thing to do, but spending your entire time focusing on one customer has really served me really well. So essentially um, right now, as I'm, you know, cause I have multiple streams on the, the platform and whatnot. So if you guys want to check it out, it's a dailyrefinement.com slash invite slash daily refinement. You get $15 off your first purchase. So you could join this week. Um, look at the cider stuff that I'm selling. Look at these, um, uh, these sneakers that I'm selling, which are lane eight and also the, um, four laps clothing that I'm selling. All of these brands have been specifically for fitness people. In fact, I don't know if this camera will go over here, um, but I've been doing pretty well. Um, also selling some yoga mats oh, it and it's been, oh, it found me. Um, I've been selling yoga mats too because it matches that demographic. So essentially, I'm trying to see if I really want to narrow in on this athleisure, but I think I, think I do. Because my question is like, is Lululemon played out? Does Lululemon, is it, is it over for them? Are they, are they too saturated? Maybe you guys can let me know in the chat if there's just too much Lululemon out there. Um, but Lululemon <laughs> is, what's up? Oh, the lights? The lights <laughs> um, I wonder if it'll stay on as I walk over here. It should. Yeah, it still sees you. Is Lululemon played out? Or do you guys think, like Supreme as an example. Supreme. Mm. They went crazy, they sold out. Now everybody knows Supreme, now there's no resale value. Is Lululemon completely played out or is it still booming? I don't know. Cause should I be investing in athleisure right now, athletic stuff, or was that really just a pandemic thing? Are people now just going back to not being active anymore? I don't know. So um, right now I'm doing some research into that demographic because I feel like at one point Nike, Adidas, they were just abandoning streetwear and normal wear and they were just doing all athleisure. But I don't know if it's going to continue that way. If people are going to continue to work at home. I don't know the trends for fitness, but this is what I'm talking about. Like I'm not an expert in this field yet. So that's why I haven't been making the most money possible. If I want to make the most money possible, I would know these things. So as I shift from just doing reselling for me and doing reselling for customers, I'm just naturally having a slightly bigger store. I'm improving my shipping. It's hard because I think that having same day shipping or one day shipping is really easy when you're one person doing it from home. When you have multiple locations um, and lots of packages going out, because now we're streaming pretty much 24 seven. So the overnight shift, if it, it is possible for, for shipments to take close to two days to ship right now. So right now my shipping time is like 1.6 days, but as I move on to one location and I have 24 hour shippers, I think I can actually bring my shipping time down to half a day and that would be epic. So I'm really, really excited for the post office. Um, 
trying to get the post office to pick up at my old location and this location has been very difficult, but the new location I am now big enough that I can get the seven to 10 ton truck. All those trucks have lift gates. The post office is gonna be supplying me with their equipment now, which has been going on for a while. They've been sending me pallets and the, the USPS um, Gaylords, which I have all around here um, for my shipments essentially we put them in there and then we can take them to the post office. They supply all the, the shipping supplies for us. But now they're gonna actually provide those metal cages for us. That's a game changer because I don't have to spend so much time looking for pallets, building pallets, finding the Gaylord boxes. And the post office is really stingy with giving those out. Um, so we were like reusing them because they have a Gaylord dumper. So like I would go there, we would unload the truck, they would dump the box out and then put it back into our truck. And that's just like, we're, I don't have to do that anymore. They bring us the actual, the actual cages, um, but now I have some different problems because the cages are a thousand pounds. So like, is that gonna be messing up my warehouse, rolling that around? I don't know. So I'm gonna be learning a whole new set of problems coming up soon when I move into my new space. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys have some questions and hopefully for you, tripling down on understanding your customers is gonna make your business get way bigger. Uh, but for me, it's been working real good. Um, Sleeping Elephant said, Supreme still has resale, just not crazy. Yeah, I think so too. It's just like Lululemon still has resale, but it's not as crazy as before. I mean, the, the pre-owned Lululemon market is ridiculous. It's so advanced. Like they have their own Lululemon pre-loved on their own website. They have pretty much everybody has ways to get it in bulk. And it's kind of like creeping up. Like the used price of Lululemon is creeping towards $10 for used. Mm -hmm. And it's selling for like 20 to 30. So it's like the profit potential is shrinking with Lululemon. Mm. Coach Ultimo says overall Lulu is a 42% sell through. Amazing. So that being said, this is, this is not really a trick question. I honestly want you guys to know who sells more clothing, Lululemon or Costco wholesale. <laughs> Costco kills it. If you guys have been to Costco, they have like those, those like that area in the middle of Costco where it has all those cheap brands like spider jackets for $19.99. Who do you guys think sells more clothes? Lululemon or Costco? Keep in mind that Costco is the number one pizza seller. Yeah. <laughs> Costco is the number one pizza seller and they're not even a pizza chain. So they sell more pizza than anyone. So I'm curious in the chat. I, I know we can't do a poll, but I'd love to do a little poll. I can do actually. Uh, well. <laughs> I'm curious uh, what you guys think. Um, I have to be in YouTube. What are people? I guess there's a bit of a lag. There is a little bit of a lag. Um, we'll we'll keep the question up until. We'll keep the question up for a bit. Until I start. But what do you guys think? Who sells more clothing? And it, it is interesting because like, you could put all your eggs in the basket of Nike and still do well. Like, um, that's kind of one of my secret projects is working on something with Nike. But like, this is it. You could put all your eggs in these big companies like Lululemon sells so much stuff, guys. It's the most profitable store in the mall, except for one. What other store in the mall is more profitable than Lululemon? We'll see if the chat knows their retail demographics. <laughs> um, Lululemon is, is number one in clothing at the mall. Um, and I just did that video where we went and walked around the mall in Palo Alto. And, oh. <laughs> um, and I was going over pretty much every single brand in the mall kills it except for Ann Taylor. Ann Taylor's a bit saturated, but it still does well if you find the right pieces. We have two votes for Costco and one vote for Lulu. That's it? Is there only like four people in here? <laughs> well, I think it's still kind of lacking. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna do a spoiler since we're, we're behind the thing, but Lululemon actually sells more clothing than Costco, which mm. is completely shocking to me. If you think about how expensive Costco is, it's like $20 for everything or less. You can get like brand new Levi's at Costco for $16.99. Um, but that being said, on the Lululemon, like leggings are like $108. So it is, I think they're $118 now. Inflation has gone up and um, I, I wanna just ask you a couple of questions, guys. I'm reading this book right now called The Psychology of Money. And it said that, I'm not old enough to remember this, but maybe people in the chat can enlighten me. Um, apparently in the 50s and 60s, the difference between the richest people and middle class people was more reasonable. So like a regular person could drive a Chevy and then a rich person could drive a Cadillac. And it would be like that different, right? But then like, like now, it's like 
people are like leasing a Honda Civic. They can't even own a car, right? They're just like leasing the cheapest car and it's still expensive. It's like five or $600 a month for a leased Honda Civic, right? The lowest car that you can get on a lease is still like three, four, three to five hundred dollars a month. But the richest people are like buying a hundred Bugattis. They're like buying 10 mansions. Like the difference between the regular middle class person who can like barely afford anything now and the ultra rich is very different. I wasn't alive during the 50s and 60s. I don't know if there, it really was closer. Like a regular person could achieve most things. Like a Chevy versus a Cadillac is not so different that it's blowing your mind like now when you're driving a Honda Civic and somebody has 20 supercars. Mm -hmm. um, some people are, so most people were voting Costco. I for profit says I haven't been to a mall in years. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shadow Boxer Clip says that's brand power, the same reason people are paying $2,000 for a Supreme jacket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So the question, they were saying that's brand power? Yeah. The fact that Lulu is oh. the top. Oh, wait, no, you said Lululemon is the second most? Lululemon uh, the sells more than Costco. And they're, oh, they're the second most profitable store in the mall. Hmm. Someone said it? the first bath and body. <laughs> the number one profitable store in the, in the mall is Apple. Apple. Yeah, Apple makes more money than any other brand. Also, probably number one or two resale brand. You, you can make a million dollars a year reselling Apple products, no problem. It's mm. like such a ridiculously huge market. And there's always the insane number of people who need to have the newest iPhone and the insane number of people who just throw away their old phone when they get a new iPhone. There's so much business in there. There's so, like even for a, um, an iPhone screen, there's like a million different things you can do. You can like cover it, you can polish it, you can replace it, you can add privacy to it. There's like every single part of the iPhone is a million dollar business. Mm. Uh, a question from Jonathan. They say, not gonna be able to make it today, but I had a question. What would you recommend during the summer to keep sales up during the summer slowdown? That's a great question. Okay, so. The, the correct answer is to sell what people are looking for during the summer, right? Because people don't stop buying things in the summer. They just buy different things, right? So I'm not saying go extreme and open a snow cone um, stall in Honolulu, but that's probably effective because there's people there that are hot looking for that solution. So for me, the way that I am hedging that bet is I am buying t-shirts. So it might sound kind of crazy, but like right now t-shirts are kind of cheap. So I'm buying t-shirts right now. So when it comes summertime, I'm gonna have to move way more t-shirts because that's what people are buying during that time. Sandals, t-shirts, because I don't want to be slow later. Right now, um, everything that's winter, I've already sold. I don't have anything here. There's no winter. I am worried about carrying stock all the way to the fall. So I've already sold all my winter last month. So no winter left. All I have now is like spring essentials. Summer essentials are similar. Warm weather stuff, because I wanna make sure that I'm not stuck with stuff that's the wrong season. So I'm not planning on having a summer slowdown, um, but I'm gonna to have to kick ass in the summer because t-shirts sell for way less money, right? Boots, sweaters, jackets, dresses, they're not worn as much in the summer. Maybe some dresses, but like, I'm trying to make it so I'm not inventory rich and cash poor. Mm -hmm. Is that the train? It is. We can hear the train from here? I thought we escaped the train. <laughs> um, question from Shadow Boxer Clips. Uh, they say, is Whatnot the main selling platform for you? It, it is currently, but it's kind of sad how few people are on it. So like, to give you guys an idea of how small and pointless Whatnot is compared to other platforms, like, I have an overnight stream now, right? So if you guys have been watching my whatnot, I am now streaming basically 24 hours. The overnight stream, I counted how many people were on whatnot. There was only 500 people in my category. Yo, that's like 500 people is like less people than are at the grocery store in a day. That's like so few people on the website. We're concurrently on eBay or Posh, even Poshmark. 
has millions of people on it the entire day. eBay has millions of users 24 hours a day. So I do need to get back in the fixed price. One thing that is kind of interesting is a lot of people have been talking about having their own website, like you should have your own website. And I'm not 100% sold on having your own website, but it is interesting with some of the better items that I have of trying to get the most money for them. I should be selling them on eBay or Poshmark or finding a different avenue because it's just like I sell things for really cheap. I, I only make a couple bucks in auction. Um, if I could go back on the eBay or Poshmark where I'm selling a ton, like making a lot per item. Like I just sold an item on Poshmark today that I made $10 profit and I didn't have to do anything. We sold a Slipknot tank top, which you guys should be buying and flipping on eBay. I have some vintage um, slip, Slipknot um, jerseys on Poshmark that um, they sell for like 75 to 100. I did sell a ton of them, but um, I'm selling them for $18 right now. And once that's sold out, I don't really know what I'm going to put back on Poshmark unless I can get cloves again. I would love to get cloves again and start my whole Poshmark experiment again. Um, but I just like things that I have more than one of and that are already popular and have a good sell through rate and not a lot of people are selling it. So if I can get cloves again this year, then I'll put them back on Poshmark. But you know, it's tough to, um, Tough because on Poshmark, I feel like the best market is sneakers and shoes or heavier items. And currently I only have light, cheap items. So like light, cheap items, I don't know if that's good for Poshmark because Poshmark has the five pound weight limit. Um, so it might as well sell heavy stuff. And on eBay though, you can take advantage of ground advantage and sell a bunch of stuff. Mm. Um, Kevin Shu says, is Goodwill is Goodwill online auctions also saturating the market? I don't think so. Uh, I think that, I think right now there's more stuff than ever, but it's not saturated if you niche down. It's absolutely still viable to niche down in the one demographic because you'll know the customer better than anybody. Um, people who niche down charge more per customer and do less work. So as an example, on the clove sneakers, Right now, I'm, I'm not selling them anymore on, on Poshmark. I don't want to flood my own market. So I was selling them for between $39 and $89, right? Now I'm wholesaling all my clothes for like $12 so that people who buy them can flip them for $39 to $89 on the, on the platform. But um, the shop online goodwill thing, it just saturates um, reselling in general, but not any specific niches because you can always do better if you know the market better. Mm -hmm. I need to get an inflatable noodle guy. <laughs> the um, lights automatically go off. Um, I want an inflatable noodle guy. There's no movement. <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> uh, I don't know, can you still see me over there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I need an inflatable wavy guy. <laughs> yeah, that goes to across. Keep the lights on. But I'll be out of here anyway, and the yeah. new warehouse that I have has great has fantastic natural lighting. Mm -hmm. So during the day, we won't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, have like a runner run around. Yeah, we won't have to do that. Um, USA Stock says, what is your 10 year plan for daily refinement? Um, my, my, well, so for daily refinement, the main thing for my 10 year goal is my kids and my wife. So like me being, they're my customers, I wanna do the best for them. Um, after that, um, for me, I'd like to continue having the ability to, um, do whatever I want, whenever I want with whoever I want for as long as I want. So I need to stockpile money. That, that's really the missing thing in California. It's expensive. So I'd like to get more money working for me. I am basically investing a hundred percent of my money in the index funds. And I feel like now's a good time to buy. Um, so I'm going to put as much money as I can into index funds. I'm going to wait and I've been maxing out my retirement accounts. I have a SEP IRA. So next 10 years, if I invest into my SEP, if I max out my SEP IRA for the next 10 years, I will never have to work again. So, um, at all. So I would just be patient for 10 years, put that money in there, pay off my house. And then I think that's it. I'll just. I'll be chilling. I was thinking about turning off YouTube and not doing any more social media because when I look at all the people that I admire, they don't really have that much social presence. They're just, they're on, they're, they're online because they're successful. People want to know them, 
but they're not influencers. They just, they're on YouTube talking about what they do, but they're not, they're not influencing. They're not out there, you know, selling stuff online. They're just doing it. So like right now I still have my paid group, but ultimately in 10 years, I'd like just everything I do to be free. I don't really want to sell stuff um, to like, because in order for me to sell like a program right now, I have to like really get in there and make sure that customer is getting exactly what they're looking for, for to charge like a, a, a large amount of money. So if I were going to redo it, right, this is what I would offer. I would say like, hey, um, reseller done for you. I'm going to charge $1,000, right? And I will one-on-one -on -one handhold you to setting up a photo station, handhold you to setting up a shipping station, handhold you in your area. I will look up all the stores in your thing, help you make a route, pick what car works for you, get and figure out 10 different categories that you can sell in, watch you list the first 20 listings, help you build up your store to 500 to 1,000 items, and then walk away. That, that, that's like what people are really looking for. They want like hand-holding all the way through, set up everything for me, find all my suppliers for me. And I don't see doing that really for less than a thousand bucks. It's a lot of work to, to help somebody set up their entire business. You could charge, honestly, in a normal business, you could charge five to $20,000 for that. It's just the resellers are just doing it at home and they think I should be doing this entire thing for no money. And that doesn't make sense. Like a coffee shop costs $75,000 to open. How come your resale business you only have a budget of 600 bucks. So it's kind of interesting. Is the camera lost? Hold on one second. All good. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, we can still hear you, but for some reason... Hopefully the camera is okay. We're testing out <laughs> We're this testing really a fun DJ, camera, right? DJI. Yeah, DJI Pocket 3. DJI Pocket Camera, which is kind of cool. It follows me. I know the iPad does that. It's still following me. Hopefully you guys can see me, but... Um, it's nice being able to stand up and talk. Um, Hold on. Yeah. I mean, we can hear you. I okay. just, for some reason, it went black for me, so I'm resetting it. I'm happy to answer questions for you guys. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'll see you more on the shows. When we're all in the, when we're in the new space, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm going to be able to show you guys all the different stock, all this different inf information, and just see. You're back. We're back. Okay, double tap your face. Ooh. There we go. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. I love it. Weird. Um, we do have some questions. Okay. Uh, well, Teresa has a comment. They're saying, I bought a big wholesale box from Boutique by the Box yep. and was so disappointed to find that the product was so oversaturated by the time I received the box. I'm guessing too many resellers bought the same box. I don't know what box it was, but I was trying to buy Eileen Fisher from them. And by the time I tried to buy it, okay, first off, I was trying to buy all of it because I didn't want other resellers to have it. And by the time I was trying to buy it, it had already sold out in small boxes. Mm. So it makes me wonder, like, um, selling all the inventory is, like right now I'm kind of cheating the matrix because I have 50% reseller customers and 50% consumer customers. So. When I sell all my stuff, if it's like a really good deal, that means it's a reseller that bought it. If it's a not a very good deal, or I'm sorry, if it's an average deal, then the consumer is happy because they got the item from me cheaper than eBay, right? So it's kind of like, I'm kind of padding the eBay prices because I'm selling stuff for so much more. Like for example, the Kerry Yuma shoes that I'm selling, I'm happy selling them for 12 to $20, but on eBay, the average sale price is much higher because people bought them from me and then resold them higher. So it can flood the market, that's why I have been purposely trying to buy what's called a buy all, um, all of it. I'm trying to buy the entire inventory because I don't want to compete with people buying one box. I just placed an order with box, uh, Boutique by the Box. My main concern with them is that it's slow. Hmm. It takes like two, three weeks to get it. And I would rather it be fast. I have suppliers where I order it today, I get it tomorrow. Because in, in LA to here is only one day. So if I order something, by two o'clock here and it goes on a truck, it'll be here the next day. It, from New Jersey, also ordering by the truck is wild. It gets here in like four or five days. So if I order something now, I might get it Friday, which is like insane. It's like so fast. And those drivers, they don't waste time. They don't sleep, they don't pee. They just get in their car and they just book it. Because 
I've ordered multiple shipments on Tuesday and gotten it on Friday, which doesn't even make sense. That's so far from New Jersey to here. That's so far. So, um, it's a, yeah, kind of blown my mind. Boutique by the box is interesting. I'm, I'm trying essentially every single supplier to get enough stuff. It's freezing again. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know Are they why. saying it's freezing? I don't know. Well, I mean, you I think can it's see the it. You I think can it's see the Wi-Fi? It on... Oh, <laughs> hold on one second. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Okay. This is the first time we're using this camera, but... As long as people have questions. Yeah. Well, they do have questions. Oh, okay. Um, but... There's not very many questions. Oh, is it not? It's if, I think it's this you connection. You think it's the port? Yeah. Because when I... Sorry, guys, hold on. There. It's when I unplug this wire and put it back in, then, then it works. I don't know whether it's the port or the wire. I don't okay. know. We don't know. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. A little bit of technical difficulties, I'm sorry. Um, well, Teresa, you might have already asked, uh, answered this, but Teresa was saying, like, how do we avoid selling oversaturated pallets? Oh, by buying all the pallets. I, don't, mm -hmm. I honestly don't know if there's another way. Do you guys know? Because like, here's, here's the problem. I, I can give you like literally as many examples as you want. It's so interesting. This entire lot of shoes that I purchased, right? Starts at size three, which is horrible, right? And goes all the way to size 14 and a half, which is also horrible for women's. So like three, like not very good. If I separated this in the boxes and sold it to everybody, somebody would get a box of size three. That's not very good. And if you get a size, um, Here's another thing that's really weird. Um, if you look at the shoes, it's always like the shoes that I have the most of are the most common sizes if it's returns. And that's gonna be like eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten. And those ones have the most people, but they also make the most pairs. So I actually don't know. I think I would say I would rather have the good sizes even though it's more saturated. So I actually don't mind saturation. Um, I actually think if you had an eBay store called Large Extra Large, it would do really well. Because mm -hmm. that's what most people are, Large Extra Large. A um, couple more questions, yep. although the camera, I don't know what's happening with the camera. But um, Double says, question, with regard to consi consistency yep. and daily listing, what advice would you give someone not selling clothing? For example, selling collectibles and bulky items will list five items daily? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with um, accountability and systems and setup. So um, by definition, when you are just starting, you have to be an everything seller because you don't have any setup. You don't have anything set up yet. I actually came to the conclusion this morning that the way I look at it, because I haven't been an everything seller for a while now, the transition from everything seller to niche seller takes a couple of years because you have to get good at something, right? So in those couple of years, it's going to take a little bit longer. I wish I had gotten this advice when I started. In the beginning, it takes a lot longer. So make sure every single unit of your effort matters and every single dollar matters because right in the beginning, all of that Im improvement compounds over your entire career. So if you're just starting right now and you're a hard goods seller and you're having difficulty establishing uh, a routine, um, what I would do is essentially the night before I would prepare all the items that I'm gonna list the following day, I would get to work, photograph, list, put the items away and go right back to setting up the items for the next day. I think the problem with everything sellers is that they don't do the prep for tomorrow's items the night before. That makes it impossible. If you start your day with trying to figure out how to list something, you've already ruined your day. You gotta start with photography and listing because it's so easy. Customer service, shipping, photography, listing, if you do it in that order, reset the zero at the end, then it's the same for every category, but especially hard goods are so hard to start because they're so random. Mm -hmm. Juan has an odd question. Chris, yep. who's your favorite rapper? <laughs> Who's my favorite rapper? I'm gonna go with 
I'm going to go with Cypress Hill because it was my first concert. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Who's my favorite rapper? Um, I like Eminem. I like um, Logic. I don't know. <laughs> Who's your favorite rapper in the chat? I, I, I like all music. I'm a huge listener of music, but I wouldn't consider myself a music aficionado. Mm -hmm. um, the USA Stock says, do you reach out to non-local suppliers in a traditional sales process, cold call or cold email? Yes, but um, I only target the specific brands that I'm looking for. So right now what I'm doing that is sort of unique is that I am just looking for unknown brands that are good at Instagram. That's sort of my main, my main thing right now. I don't know what's going on with the camera. Um, so I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> uh, it's now a podcast. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, Mike Impressions and Reviews says, any advice on health insurance as an eBay seller if you can't get on a spouse's health insurance? Yeah, you, it, this is really good. Um, getting insurance for yourself is, is, a, is a kind of a daunting process, but um, I just got an interesting, um, mm -hmm. I just got an interesting piece of feedback from another entrepreneur when I was in the lounge earlier, and he said that he uses a program called JustAnswers.com we can ask questions like, what health insurance should I get as a solopreneur? Or you can ask, you know, chat GPT, you can basically do some Google searches, but essentially it takes about a half a day to figure out every single one of these things. Just gotta give yourself enough time to test drive a couple of different insurance companies, get some different quotes, pick what fits your family the best. Um, I think it would cost us around $1,100 for four people if I wasn't on my wife's insurance. So it depends for each person what your needs are, how old you are, and what stage of life you're in. But I think between 600 and 1100. We're doing webcam for now. <laughs> okay. Oh. This webcam? Yeah, except it's it's crazy right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Um, okay, as I'm doing this, question from A, I received tons of low tier clothing that's donated to us. Something's $5 to $20 profit. Would you sell these items even if they are lower profits? Everything is free. Thank you. I, I would not. Um, I would bundle it all and sell it by the pound. Um, or I would create my version of the Goodwill bins. Or... I would lot it up with the better $20 pieces so I could sell it, but I, I wouldn't, a whole bunch of really, really free clothing has never worked out for me. I don't know how to do that model. Traditionally, when I go and buy a whole bunch of cheap stuff, it just ends up sitting forever. I haven't figured out a way to, to do that. Hmm. The, the big lots of cheap clothing, they, they just, they're worth about a dollar a piece. Simmer and Cimmerian Music says, what's your favorite movie? Yeah, what's your favorite movie? Are you trying to guess my passwords? These are like the, <laughs> the, these are like the questions that people try to have. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I can't answer that one. It's literally one of my security questions. Um, Grease says, do you have any specific videos regarding LLC for eBay store owners? Is it necessary, um, that sort of insurance? No, but I would talk to an accountant, um, or you can call 1-800-ACCOUNTANT and just use their free service. They're going to try to sell you stuff when you call in, but you can ask for basic advice. I personally would just file as a sole proprietor. In the beginning, you are already a business under your social security number. So I would not sign up for an LLC or an S Corp because it's an easy way for an accountant to charge you $900 to $1,500 for that service when you, most of you do not need that. Um, I'm not a tax pro, but I would consider only getting um, an LLC or an S Corp if you're trying to avoid self-employment tax of 18%. 
and it's, it's enough to make it worth that extra work of starting a new company. So as an example, I work here at Daily Refinement Inc. as a W-2 employee. My salary, I am subject to self-employment tax. Everybody got that? I work for myself. So the salary that I pay myself from my company, I have to pay 18% self-employment tax on that. But the rest of the money that's not my salary, I do not pay self-employment tax on. I just get as the owner. So you have to be very clear when you switch from LLC to S Corp. And I generally don't see people with no employees. If you don't have any employees, I don't recommend incorporating. It's like a lot of extra work in California. It costs $800 a year to be a company. There's no reason to do that unless you like need the extra protection. Um, that being said, depends on what you sell. If you sell potentially dangerous things, maybe you want to separate yourself from your business. That's a good idea. Um, but for 99% of resellers, you should just do a sole proprietorship. Um, and just write off everything um, from the amount that hits your bank account and then pay tax on what's left and pay that 18% self-employment tax. That's usually best for 99% of resources, unless you, you're really killing it and making a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a comment on that in just a second if you don't have any questions. Uh, just, well, you can go ahead. You have a okay. comment on it. So my thought is, um, I'm... Because I read the book, The Psychology of Money, I actually think that maybe 100% of my success is luck. Because like where I live, there is 200 thrift stores. There are tons of seven day a week flea markets. There's a bajillion people who live here. There's tons of good stuff here. All of the, the things are here to be successful. So like, I don't know how much of it was actually me. If I lived somewhere and I wasn't resourceful, maybe I wouldn't have any reselling success. But how come I'm here and I try hard? I don't know what caused that. I'm here and I also have a very high amount of effort. So I think, I don't know. After reading that book, it made me wonder if everything is just luck because like Bill Gates was born and went to a high school that had the only computer in the United States. Like, you know, that's like literally one in one million chance that you go to a computer, a school with a computer at that time. There was no computers. It was two computers in the U.S. and this school had access to one of them. So like, is that him or is that lucky that he was born and that went to that high school and plus he worked hard? Everyone that, that's successful works hard. But is it just your circumstance? Like, I don't know. Like, how many people have parents? and they turn out just like their parents. And how many people have parents and they don't like the way their parents did it, so they do the opposite, <laughs> right? So which one, like even in siblings, you see that. One sibling is like their parents, one sibling is their complete opposite. So I don't know. I feel like your circumstances matter so much. Like when I was eight years old, this girl made fun of me when I was singing a song and it hurt my feelings. I'm not a singer. It hurt, it, it cut so deep, I gave up on my dreams of being a singer. That was it. But other things, people were like, oh, I don't think you can do it. And I'm like, okay, watch me. How come? I, I don't know. I, I kind of think that maybe everything is luck. After watching, reading that book, it kind of feels like everything is luck. <laughs> Tito says, luck is part of it, but not all of it. Um, Juan has a question. They say, Chris, if you could start over, what would be the top two processes or knowledge you mastered before growing? Inventory system and um, photo and listing is the same process. When I first started, I would photograph and then list sometime later. Photograph on my phone, take like a, f a couple days or an hour and list after. Now I don't do that anymore. I do everything right away all in one process, and an inventory system that's chronological. You'll never lose an item. Never lose an item, really good at listing. That's how I would start my eBay career if I was starting brand new. Mm -hmm. um, all right. We're gonna turn this light on. I think... Should we call it? We should call it my... I don't know if it's choppy for you guys, but my internet here is pretty bad, so I don't know if that's affecting our live stream. <laughs> Um, All right, we're going to call it. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Yes. Bye. Oh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs>